The Adams Dry Fly needs no introduction. It's arguably one of the most popular fly patterns out there. It was created in 1922 by a man named Leonard Halliday. And the irresistible fly with its fat deer body hair was created by Joe Messenger of Morgantown, West Virginia in the 1930s. The Adams Irresistible is just one of his many variations of his Irresistible fly. It floats high and it's great in fast water. Here's the fly in the vise. Our hook today is a TMC 100. That's their standard dry fly hook and it's in a size 10 and our thread is Vivas GSP 100 in black and we'll get the thread started about a third of the way back down the hook shank and wrap back to the hook bend. Moose body hair. We'll take uh, five or six strands of that. Get that in a stacker to even it up. We want it to be about a hook shank in length. Take a few sort of loose turns to hold it on top of the hook. If you take really tight turns, it tends to flare the tail out a lot more than what I like. So we'll capture those ends up where we started our initial tie-in. Take some nice tight turns all the way back. And when we get to the base of the tail, loose turn. That's about what you want for a flare. Rid of our excess. Now we're going to take our whip finish tool here and tie that off to keep from pushing our deer hair off the back of the hook when we tie the body in. And the body of this fly is just some natural deer hair. We're going to tie this in in two separate clumps. So we'll take a clump about maybe half a pencil width. Get rid of all the junk, cut off the tips, which we don't need. And we'll take two loose wraps over it and then pull tight and let go of our material so that it spins around the hook, wrap through it and up towards the eye. Now, because of the hook bend, the material doesn't like to spin completely through it so we'll take our bodkin here and just kind of help it along there i think that'll work and we'll take another clump about the same size get rid of all the junk and the fuzzies get rid of the tips which we don't need and just like before a little loose turns, pull it tight, let it slip through your fingers, and around it goes. And advance your thread through it. To the eye, take a couple turn whip finish here and to tie that off. I'm going to cut our thread and work on shaping the body next. So we're just going to go through this, make sure we don't have any stuck material. You can see a couple there. There we go. All right, to shape the fly, we're going to, we want a, an eventual teardrop shape. And the way I attack that is to make four square cuts one across the top then the bottom, then the two sides. There. Now we're going to start shaping the, the body. Trimming this off at an angle back towards the moose body hair. You have to be really careful here. You don't cut that hair. And as long as you take your time, you should be okay.
I have seen people take tape, painter's tape, and tape off the moose hair from everything to keep them from clipping the materials. I've actually tried that and I just find this easier for me. And we'll square up the front of this fly some before we finish shaping it. Keeping that squared up greatly aids when you're going to tie in your wings and your hackle. Now it's just a matter of trimming the hair away until you get the shape that you want. Just remember that what you cut, you can't put back. There, I think that will fish. Okay, next we're going to uh, tie in some Danville's 6 aught Flymaster in black. And we'll form a jam knot. I use the two types of thread because the gel spun, I can really bear down on that deer hair and not worry about breaking my thread. And the wing is just going to be some hen hackle feathers. So we'll pick a couple out. We're just going to use the tips and we want to tie those in so the shiny sides of the feathers are facing each other. And we want these to be, oh, a hook shank in length. Now because of that big body in my way, I tie these in a little bit backwards like that, get them where I want them, and we can tie them in. I jump our thread in front of the feathers, form a thread dam to stand the wings up. There we are. Next we're going to tie in our hackles. There'll be two. One is a grizzly hackle I've taken from a saddle. And we'll prepare that like we always do. We'll pull the barbules out away from the stem. Cut those off like that. And the other is from a dark barred ginger. Uh, brown is also traditional. And we'll tie these in right behind the wing. I'm going to tie them in together and with their shiny side out. And wrap them forward separately. Forward to the hook eye. I'm going to reposition our hook so the thread doesn't fall off the eye. And we'll start wrapping our hackle. We'll start with the grizzly. A couple of turns behind and jump in front of the wing. We reach the eye. We'll capture it. Cut off our excess. And now the dark barred ginger. I 
Cut off our excess. We'll sweep the hackle back out of the way, form a small head. Cut a whip finish tool, make a four or five turn whip finish. Seat our knot. Cut the thread. Manage to catch one. And some head cement. This is Loon's water based. Look it out of the eye, and our fly is finished. Please feel free to add comments at the bottom of the page, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to view all the new content here at Trident Fly Fishing. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again next time.